Well, we're glad that you're with us today. And, you know, last couple weeks, I can't help but think about our, our church and how it was birthed. And next week will be four years old. And, you know, I'm so thankful for our church and the message today is why I'm thankful about City Church. And we'll talk more about the birth of the church next Sunday because we have so many new people, visitors, and how the church has grown. And uh, today's message was, uh, <clears throat> I, I was standing in the kitchen late. I'm always up because of my knees and um, bother me. So I'm standing in the kitchen late the other night putting one of those heat pad things in the microwave, you know. And the Lord birthed this <clears throat> message today in my heart and convicted me about something uh, that I shared with you about six months ago, and I'm going to give you an update to it. And it's part of the message, and <clears throat> it's actually not a McDonald's story. So <clears throat> anyways, you know, I, I want us to be aware as we continue to grow, to always know, we're going to pray in just a minute, but always know every week is there's always somebody new here. And to be aware of that. Because they don't know. A lot of times people come, they've never even walked in a church before or heard a message or anything. It's a society we live in today. Let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful for City Church. And Lord, Lord, help us to understand today that this is a message that I hope that we put in our pocket something that I really believe that's Maybe not necessary for today, but just a reminder that what we always need to be aware of, that who we are in you, we are the body of Christ of you. Lord, we always want the flow of your Holy Spirit has been led us today, and the message today. We want that flow to be so strong that people feel your presence. As we hear so many comments so much, as people come and walk through these doors. Lord, may it always be that way. May we not quench your spirit. Help us to learn through your message today how that we can just continue to let your spirit flow. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to turn to just a few passages today, but I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 4 in verses 1 through 4. Always remember when you're looking at most of the, the epistles, know that whatever the apostle who's writing that is writing to a church. A church is being written to. And I want you to just remember that. It could even be to us as we read this. So as I read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, the apostle says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. How do we walk? With all lowliness, gentleness, long-suffering, in other words, patience. Bearing with one another in love. That's what we, with each other, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And hear what the scripture tells us, endeavoring. We should always pursue this as a brother and sister in Christ with each other. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called and one hope of your calling. I want to go back to verse 3. Endeavoring, we always need to strive towards that as a church family. And what I'm thankful for today is you, as we, as a, as a body of Christ, is I believe that you do that. I, again, this is a message to put in your pocket to remind ourselves that we are so careful in a world. Isn't it, isn't it amazing the world we live in today with... Uh, I, I, I don't really hardly watch rarely watch television, but, uh, but if I'm driving down the road and I have XM in my truck and you, you can get the different news stations and they start yelling at each other, you know, 
this side, that side, this side, that side. And then all the different things that, that we see of so much of the same thing I just said on all the reality TV. You know, I don't get it. Don't try and explain it to me about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and all that. I don't get that. I don't want to know it. But for some reason, it's been all over the news the last couple, I don't know, week about this guy broke his engagement with this girl and now he's marrying this other girl. And, uh, and You know, it's all, it, it, the reason I'm telling you, it's all over the news. I can't read the regular news without that popping up somewhere. What are we living in? So what I'm getting at is this, these, this, this whole uh, dysfunction of, bickering and fighting and back and forth, if we're not careful, it can fall exactly what the devil wants to into the church. It has. You've, you've been in those situations, and I want us to prevent this. I'm so thankful it's not here. I want to keep it out. That's why I'm bringing this message today. You know, when I was uh, pastoring another church, a couple other churches, but one of the larger churches I was pastoring, you know, got back to me that we had a visitor that Sunday. They were, you know, knew they came early. They sat down, you know, and somebody in, in, in the church, you know, walked up to this person that was a visitor and said, hey, uh, I, I want you to know that's my seat. Uh, uh, and I know if someone was sitting at one of your tables next week, next week, they'd be in trouble, wouldn't they? You know, I share a couple of things with you with that, and to be so aware of that we need to keep the flow of the Holy Spirit. You know, it was just uh, years and years ago, seems like forever, but about 35, probably 40 years ago now, my hair was pretty long, and... Uh, there, there was a picture in, my paper, in the paper of my dad and I about something. I don't even remember what. And so my dad, I was at the church one day. He was pastoring. And he said, hey, come here. I want to show you something. He walked in his office. And a guy had cut the picture out of the paper, had sent it to my father, circled me in my hair, had this comment and said, how can you pastor with your son being this and that and his hair being like this and that and so forth? I'm like, oh, man, what? You know, my dad just kind of looked at it and laughed, and he wanted to make sure he saw him throw it in the trash can. Another example I want you to be so aware of. This affected me, and, and, I, and it hurt me, but I learned from it. Uh, I was just new, just starting in ministry, so I'm going back probably 39 years ago. And I had a, it wasn't a, at the time, it wasn't a Trans Am, it wasn't a fancy, it was nothing, it was a black Firebird. And I was like, keep my cards a certain way. And it was the first year I was in ministry. And I had uh, a buddy of mine had these special rims. He says, hey, now you want these, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. So he gave me a good deal. So it looked really nice, even though, you know, it had some little stinky little engine in it. Nothing, nothing. I'm building this up for a reason. So I'm on my day off. I pull into a paint store. I'm going to do some painting in the house. There's a, a young lady. She's in her mid-20s. I pull in, she's coming out of the paint store, I'm getting out of the Firebird. And she says to me, oh, I see where our ties are going. And I said, oh, I didn't know you tithe. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, I didn't say that. <laughs> I almost got you, didn't I? <laughs> but, but, you know that so affected me that a few months later, I sold, that, I sold that Firebird. It so bothered me. Now, the devil temporarily won the victory by sowing discord, by quenching the spirit. But I learned a very valuable lesson. As a year or two went by, I realized I was never going to let someone or something like that ever affect me again. And I was going to be myself. And I believe that's who we are as City Church, endeavoring. We, we have to work at it because we all get set in our ways. We have to work at it to, you know, you know how you are with your siblings growing up, you know? There's always something going on. But you got to work at it. You love each other. And, and why is that so important? What am I getting at with this in the second verse we're going to look at? 
because people are watching us. The world is watching. The world is watching. Matter of fact, I, we had someone in our church fellowship this week. They had to go do some work on a home, and uh, he, he's got some tattoos. And, and uh, the lady was offended, you know, and then he was just talking about the Lord and about city church and church, and she gave this comment, well, you wouldn't be allowed in our church with those tattoos. So it exists. This is where we are, and I want us to, to be so aware of that I'm so thankful for you guys and how that we live and the way that we do ministry. It's from the heart. What does the Lord tell us? And I want you to get this. In another passage, in John chapter 13, as Jesus was getting ready to leave this world, he shares in his own words something very important to the disciples. He gives them a new commandment. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also, he says it again, that you love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you, he says it again, if you love one another. Our greatest testimony to the world is how that we get along as believers and how that we're there for each other. And I love this church and how that you, you're all, we're always there for each other. It's a great testimony to so many people that I come in contact with in our community. I share with you at the beginning of the message today how the Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night standing in my kitchen and I felt like if, if I can't do this, how can we do this as believers and really make an impact? Because people are going to ask, the Bible says, for the hope that's in you. And many reasons that people are going to ask is because the way that we treat each other, the way that we're willing to help each other, be there for each other, forgive each other. So I'm standing, and let me give you a backdrop if you were here six months ago to this story. And as I was going through all the mess that I was going through and had lost everything, everything was going on and the whole thing, um, there was, if I can say this, one of the top ten pastors in America today, television evangelist, had been, when I was pastoring the temple, had been there to speak. I've been out to eat with him, been at the church a couple times, and I was at such a low point and I just needed some counsel from this pastor that I really looked up to. And if you were here six months ago, I just want to bring it up because I want to bring it up to today and what the Lord has done in my life since then. That, that I like had the plague when I was going through everything as a pastor and the Lord just said, just thou stay faithful, don't try and figure it out. Is that you today? Don't try and figure it out just stay faithful because sometimes everybody might be pushed away and even those that you love or look to. So I called this office of this person who lives in California, the pastor's office, and I said, hey, could I speak to pastor, Dr. So-and-so? Uh, this is my name, da 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 and he's been our church to speak a couple times, and, and she said, hold on just a second. And uh, explained to her that I knew the pastor. Again, he'd been to our church to speak, been out to eat with him. And so she came back on the phone, and she said, explain this to me again. I said, here's my name, and Dr. So-and-so has been at our church to speak, and I just needed some counsel for what I'm going through. And she said these words to me, which if you were here six months ago, you remember she said these words to me, he doesn't take these kind of phone calls. And I was so hurt and angry at the same time. Now, I know the way ministry goes and the way the Lord blesses and the way things are going in church. I, I, 
I'm going to run into him sometime. Now, I just have to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I was going to just say it in a way, delicately, but I was going to throw a couple cuss words in there, you know. <laughs> now, now, here, let me, hold on, don't get upset with me as your pastor, here's why. Not, not bad ones or anything, but just to, get, just to get a little, you know, knowing that he doesn't really hear that too much now, and I'm out in order, that, just to get a rise out of him, just because I'm so, uh, I was so upset because of what he did. I'm just being honest with you. I still to this, <clears throat> to what happened the other night, I was going to do that. <clears throat> so, I'm standing in the kitchen the other night, and I'm in the, right in front of the microwave, it's right in front of me, and the Lord brings this up to me. And I knew if I'm going to pastor, if I'm going to uh, be tenderhearted and forgiving others as Christ has forgiven us and do the right thing, I hadn't completely worked through that. I'd worked through it most of the way, but I know I hadn't worked through it all the way. So just to let you know, the Lord really convicted me of that, and that's why I'm talking about what I'm talking about today and how that when I do see that person, it will still come across a certain way, but it's going to come across to speak the truth in love, not in the way that my flesh wanted to. Love each other as Christ has loved us. I had every right, still do, to be upset about it. And it still bothers me that where all the pastors went through, what I was going through. But you know what? The Lord was there with me. He's with you. And... What I'm getting at to, to share with you is at the close, we're going to look at a verse in a minute. I don't, want, I, I don't want you to miss it. You say, what do you mean, Dallas? I, I don't want you to miss the flow. You know what the Bible tells us? God tells us when Jesus came into this world, he was light. And he gives us an example, the Holy Spirit of water. And we'll never thirst again. The day that we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Bible tells us, God's word, that that water from Jesus Christ is so powerful, you will never thirst, you will never want, you might be tempted of the things of the world or all these other things, but you'll, ne you'll always be satisfied because you have the true living water that will always quench your thirst. But that verse says and continues with you and I that when we get the water from Jesus Christ, the true and the living water, he says out of our heart will flow rivers of living water. You see what the Lord wants to do? He wants to use us in a powerful way. He wants the spirit to so flow in you and me that that joy and that peace and that people see this, this unbelievable life that you have, not just what the Lord has given us, but it's going to so come as rushing water. I don't want to quench that. You don't want to quench that. And why is that? Let's look at... I'm going to skip over, jump to the last verse, and then we'll come back to the other one. Why is that? Job in chapter 42 and verse 10. Now, if you don't know the story of Job, whenever I reference the story, I like to tell a little bit of it because maybe not everybody knows the story. But if you know the story of Job, which most people do, he had <clears throat> completely lost everything. His family, his friends, his millions of dollars, his standing in the community, he's eating with the dogs, he's miserable and wondering, why has this happened to me? Along the way, his buddies, supposed to be his friends, have a conversation with him. And they say, hey, Joe, what is going on? What is going on? There is something that you, that, I mean, what have you done? I mean, the Lord is really angry with you. What have you done? 
man, there is something that you've done. Look what's happened to your life. And they didn't stop. They just hammered him. His friends, his friends just hammered him. I, I don't want us to ever be like that. See, that's, that's judging. We don't know where that person's been. We don't know what's happened. And the Bible tells us, which is a great passage, that the Lord is going to double all that Job lost. But there's something that he had to do before that took place. Look at Job in chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord re- restored Job's losses, here it is, when he prayed for his friends. And indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You know, the scriptures leading up to that said the Lord was not even going to speak to his friends And it was so wrong what they did unless Job prayed for them. We will get hurt by life. And sometimes you will get hurt by someone that's a brother and sister in Christ. And again, this might not be... You don't need to hear this today. Everything's good. But there will be, as you live long enough... There will be a time that you'll need this. But what I want you to get, if you, like me, and it took a while, can get to the place to where you can pray for that person, the Lord says, I'm going to double your blessing. Now, maybe you're not there today and everything's good and everything's fine. I'm just telling you, someday down the road, you might, need this and all this message is hopefully is preventative because I'm so thankful that the comments I get that people come and visit here no matter what they have on or the tattoos that are on them or what they do or what's happened in their life man there's something that you must have done to be where you're at I mean the Lord must really be angry at you I hope that's not us we don't want to be like that And, you know, if we can get to the place to where I had to, in ministry, to know that here we are. I don't want any of us to miss a double blessing. That's what the Lord's going to do for you and for me. And the power that's in that, to know that I can use that and be a testimony with that other pastor in a way that hopefully something can be learned from that. Instead of being angry and always venting and telling other pastors and them shaking their head and, you know, whatever. Does that edify? Does that build the body of Christ? Let's close with this last verse. In Galatians chapter 6, this is... Well, I'm so thankful for you guys today. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, and we'll close. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Here it is. Especially to those who are the household of faith. Does everybody know what a prequel is? You know what a prequel is? I never knew that until movies started doing it. A prequel is a movie before the movie. You know what I mean? It's, It's the movie before the movie happened. I don't understand it, but it's like, you know, here's the movie, but the movie was successful. We're not only gonna do four or five of them in a row, but we're gonna now, we're gonna do one before the movie. So the movie before the movie is a prequel. So I want to close with this. The 
before the, the church was burst, let, let, let me give you a little prequel way I was able to, to get through what I went through. And it's because of many of you here. It's because of brothers and sisters in Christ didn't judge me. There were some that were there that I knew loved me. And you know, sometimes in this life, a brother and sister, in other words, you have to piggyback on their faith because you're not strong enough with what you're going through. What will we do if they weren't there? There'll be other people I'll talk about next week about the church, but, you know, Ed and Janine are, are here. They're, or Ed's, Ed and Janine Gabbert, they, I've known them, I don't know, as long as I can remember. And, and, you know, when my dad was dying, and at that time my wife didn't want to be married anymore, my dad's dying, my mom had emergency surgery, she couldn't be around my dad when he was dying, it was just everything was just going crazy. But it just seemed like those few weeks, wherever... I was where it happened. Ed and Janine showed up. They were there. I didn't have to call, didn't have to ask. They were there. And you know, there were so many people through that time, and I remember Andrew, uh, his parents come here, who's was in California, and for four years, three, time, three nights a week at least, we would pray for 30 to 45 minutes for four years, over, over, and over again. Lord, just get me through, Lord, just some way. Let us do good to the household of faith first. You know, there were so many of you that I would run into, and I went from the weight I am now to about 170 down to about 142 when I was going through all that. And I can't hardly look at some of the pictures when we started the church to see what, I was, what had happened. What I'm getting at is I would run into some of you in public and you knew what was happening in my life and you would shake my hand or you'd put your arm around me and there'd be a $50 bill or a $100 bill or sometimes $200. Didn't say anything. Just gave me a hug. Let me know they love me. Not going to judge me. Even though I'd lost everything, I'd look like a fool. I wonder what had happened in my life. It was a mess. But the prequel, the reason why the church was able to start like it did, and all those that came along, and Ernie and Jim and Lisa and Ben and Lori were there, That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So I want you to see somebody as your life goes along. And I want you to know that I'm thankful for you. And I want you to know that the body of Christ, as many that I was thinking as I was speaking today, they don't want me to say anything about them, but they know who they are that were there for me. That's why we have the spirit that we do at City Church. I don't want to judge. I know where I was. And maybe some of you are there today but I want you to know that Jesus loves you more than you can ever imagine. And we're right there with you. We're right there with you. Let's pray. As their heads are bowed today, man, it's just so great for me to be a part of this church family. And I thank you. 
We don't judge. This is a preventative message. We want to always, as the church blesses, and we continue to grow and grow and grow. We want to always be that way, whether someone has a tattoo or whether someone is getting beaten up in life. Well, I don't know. We want to put our arm around them and say, hey, you know what? We're going to love you right where you're at. I'm going to pray with you. And we're going to pray, and we're going to pray, and we're going to pray. And then we're going to pray some more. And now we're going to love you some more. And then sometimes we're not going to understand, or we're going to cry some, or we're going to get frustrated and angry. But we're not going anywhere. You're my brother. You're my sister. And we are here for a greater purpose. And that purpose is to see you and me and all of us through this place called life into eternity to where the Son of Jesus Christ shines forever. No more pain, no more sorrow, and no more suffering. So maybe you feel inadequate today. Maybe you feel unworthy. Maybe you feel like Jesus, you, you got to be cleaned up first before you come to him. I want you to know as we give an invitation today. That's why the, the old song, Just As I Am, you come just as you are. And Jesus, let him do what he can do. He will forgive you. He will give you brothers and sisters in Christ. You'll be a part of a family that lasts forever, that will always be there for you. If you don't know him today, Ben's going to lead us. We're going to give you an opportunity. Fathers, we come to you today. If there's someone here that doesn't know you, Lord, let them know that you accept them just as they are. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us. So, Lord, if there's someone here today that needs to experience that power of living water that they'll never thirst again, your spirit that connects us, that keeps us going, that unites us as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we don't judge, that we love, they want to experience that. Lord, if there's someone here today, may they accept you as Ben leads us with his closing song. In Jesus' name, amen.